Thank you for joining us. Like so many others on TV, due to the pandemic, I mostly still conduct interviews from here in my home office, but I made an exception for this show. In our troubled world in which there's so much avoidable misinformation and tragic conflict, who would ever imagine that cooperation, friendship and peace can replace it with exciting, positive solutions in medicine, science, education, technology, and the environment, and more. Our guest today is a world-famous, internationally acclaimed scientist, Dr. Shai Efrati of the Aviv Clinics. He will share some astonishing news right after these messages. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. With us here is Aaron, he's going to give us a tour of the Aviv Hyperbaric facilities right here in Central Florida. Aaron, let's go. Let's walk. So right here is our vitals area. This is where clients will check into the facility. They'll take a seat um, in one of the chairs and we'll do blood pressure, um, heart rate, look at their blood oxygen values, look in their ears. This corridor, we pass the physician hallway, the nursing hallway, the cognitive hallway, and then we're just walking towards the hyperbaric suites. We come to our sub-waiting area. After clients have been checked in for vitals, they will all gather in this area, communicate, drink some coffee, have some tea. I'm actually sitting in a hyperbaric chamber right now with Aaron. Aaron, tell us more about this. Yeah, so the clients come into the hyperbaric. We close the doors and increase the pressure to two atmospheres, and the clients will fluctuate wearing a mask, breathing in 100% oxygen for 20 minutes, then they'll remove the mask for five minutes, and then they fluctuate that 20 on, five off for the two hour session. During the hyperbaric, we have these tablets here, and our neurocognitive team develop training programs around what we've seen in each client's cognitive ability. So they're not actually watching television. What they're doing is part of the process, actually. Correct. They're not watching Netflix or listening to music the whole time. We want to actively stimulate the areas of the brain that have shown decline or have shown deficits. One of the things I like, Aaron, is actually this is very, very comfortable. I feel like I'm in a luxury airliner. This is our quarter million dollar state-of-the-art treadmill. It has a lot of capability. Every client will get a gait analysis, so we'll analyze how they're walking, which plays a major role into their physical therapy time. So your goal is just to match your footprint to the one up on the screen or on the treadmill. Joining us now, is Dave Globig, CEO of Aviv Clinics, and Dr. Shai Efrati, co-founder. It's such an honor to be here with you, sir. A pleasure. Happy that you are here. Thank you. Please tell us a little bit about Aviv. I will tell you how it was established by the name Aviv. You know that it's what established in Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm, I'm myself, I'm, I'm a physician. I work in Israel, in the Shamir Center for Hyperbaric Medicine and research, and I'm also a professor at the Tel Aviv University, the medical school and the neuroscience school. And something like 20 years ago, I have done, in one of my research, I have done a study that the goal of the study was to prove that neurons in the brain cannot, cannot regenerate it. 
and we had the opposite results from what was expected. We have found out with, that with appropriate stimulus in, in certain condition, we can actually induce the neurons that we have in the brain to proliferate, to grow, and make new ones. And since that point, I'm, you can say I'm stuck. It's growing all the time and getting bigger all the time. And we have developed a method by which we can actually regenerate, repair damaged brain tissue. Uh, it started in Israel. Uh, for that, we are using hyperbaric chamber. I know that people in the US, when they are here in hyperbaric chamber, they have something in their mind, but this is completely different. It's actually a suite where we are generating fluctuation in the oxygen level. It's not only oxygen, it's the fluctuation. And by that, we can trigger regeneration of new neurons and new blood vessels in the brain. Uh, we started with stroke patient and then moved to patients that are suffering from traumatic brain injuries. And then we moved to the, what we call the, the frontiers of our Western society, which is the age-related cognitive decline. So the center in Israel become big. In Israel, in our center, we are treating more than 300 patients per day. And we have, unfortunately, a long waiting list. And then we decided that we need to export that to other locations. And of course, everybody that saw our study in Israel, I had been approached by many who have an amazing idea. They told me, Shai, I want to build a center like you and I need your help. I said, what do you say? This is, this is amazing. How did you thought about it? But I thought, what is the best way to do it? And I see it as an opportunity an opportunity to gather different countries, different cultures, with centers that are working in collaboration, that are changing the knowledge all the time, and changing people, medical staff all the time, in order to do even more good than what we are doing in only in Israel. And for that, we have established Aviv. So actually, Aviv is responsible to taking the things that we have developed in Israel, and export them to the world in a collaborative fashion. Absolutely fascinating. Dave, I'd like to ask you to add to that. You're here in, in Florida, and you've opened this center here in a prime part of Florida. Tell us a little bit about Aviv locally in the United States. Absolutely. So our first clinic that we opened here in Central Florida, uh, the first, we've had several uh, that have opened, are in the process of opening, is is as Shai said, dedicated to improving brain performance, cognitive performance, with a focus on the aging process. Florida, it's one of the destination retirement areas uh, in our country. And aging means so much, and it means something different to everybody. Um, aging for an executive who is 52 years old is, is remembering last year's numbers in the midst of a board presentation at the tip of his tongue. For a young NFL athlete, it could mean the difference between a catch or an interception, making the team or being cut. For my dad, who had the opportunity to go through the program as a 69-year-old professor, it's about independence. It's about retaining uh, control of your life, being able to work, function, see your your grandchildren walk down the aisle, play soccer, um, and grow up. And the opportunity to come alongside individuals who want to invest into their own health, physically and cognitively, is, is, is a dream come true. Absolutely phenomenal. How did you get started in this area? By mistake, like, like any exciting things that happen. Uh, I always tell my PhD students that if you have a theory when you're starting the research and you find out that your theory is indeed true, then this is not innovation. Because based on the data that you had been sitting before and making this theory, there are plenty of people around the world that have the same database. So they can come to the same theory, the same conclusion, etc. However, 
If you had a theory based on the current available data in the world, and you have something that is totally different than what it was expected, then you should embrace it, feel fortunate that you have the privilege to fail, because now you have data that, that others doesn't have. And this what happened, that's, that's exactly what happened here. Remember, the goal was to prove that it's not working, that it's not feasible. That was the goal, to understand the mechanism why it's not feasible. And we got a totally opposite result. Every time something like that happened in my research group, and I'm privileged to have a quite a significant research group that is working with me, you know, the PhD is frustrated. Hey, I thought that and that and that. And then I'm coming with a bottle of champagne and I'm saying, let's celebrate another failure. <laughs> Because now we have something that others don't have. This is a privilege to have it. And then you tackle it, and you're trying to learn what's happening, what's, et cetera, et cetera. And the main goal of everything we are doing in our research group is to make a change, to make some good. There is a whole discussion, what is, what is considered to be making good? Right? It's, it's, how do you know that you are making good? My reply to that is that if somebody comes to you at the end of the process and tell you, thank you, it means that you have done good. Speaking of doing things that are good, what is fascinating is in this troubled, confused world, it's my understanding that Aviv has inflamed the imagination and extreme interest of medical professionals all over the world who come to you and science and your medicine is uniting, actually. Exactly. That's how we can make progress in medicine. And what's happening, for example, we have this center here at the center of Florida. And the medical team over here was trained by us in Israel. And after being in Israel, trained in Israel, getting the certification in Israel, this center started to operate with a better quality with what we have in Israel, I can say. And this center now becomes the hub for educating other centers in the U.S. Next year, we, it takes time as a center like this, but a year from today, we're going to have a center, for example, in Manhattan. The people in Manhattan are going to be educated over here. We're going to have a center in London. It will be easy to educate them over here because here we are speaking English. In Israel, we are still speaking Hebrew. It's an amazing language, but not many speak it. Okay? We have a center in Dubai, for example, okay, which is exciting by itself. Okay. Why so? Share with our audience why. I'm from Israel. For so many years, they were, in addition to physical boundaries, there were also unseen boundaries between culture, between Arabs to Israel. Now, you can break and make a, break these boundaries and make a bridge between people on two major elements. One of them is health and medicine, because if you are sick, or somebody in your family is sick, you don't give them. You will do whatever is needed to make them better. And the other thing is education. And today I can say that Sultan Ben Sulaim from Dubai, one of the most influential guy in Dubai, came to Israel with his daughter three years ago. She had a problem, neurological problem. And he had figured out that we are the only one who can help her. So for that, it was before the Abraham Agreements. He came to Israel. He was in Israel three months, full three months, okay? In Israel with his daughter. He by himself, of course, took the treatment to himself to improve his performance, which was dramatically improved. And during his stay in Israel for three months, you know what he told me? He told me, shy you won't believe what I thought about Israel before. You won't believe what I was being taught about 
to this. And now that I'm here, it's an amazing country, amazing people. And he is one of the most inspiring person I ever seen, I ever met, and I met a lot. And then we say we'll be the, build this bridge. Many of the things that happening now you can imagine because we met three years ago. And the center in Dubai was started to be established more than three years ago. And we have their physician and medical team that are coming from Israel, from Lebanon, from Europe, from the US. And the most exciting thing, we have people who are coming to get the treatment from all over, from all over. Nobody gives a damn. Everybody's working together. Everybody's enjoying together. Because the, at the end, it's health. We want to have good brain performance, good physical performance. And that's what we need for life. And for that, we are breaking any boundaries. And we have now a bridge. And when I'm saying a bridge, what does it mean, a bridge? A bridge means that no matter how the water are storming below, no matter what the waves are going below, you are on a bridge. You are above it. We connect, we collaborate, we see each other, and we love each other because who we are. And we are tolerant to whatever religion you are. It doesn't matter. Some have blue eyes, some have black eyes, it doesn't matter. And some was taught until the age of three that Judaism is the religion. Other was taught until the age of three that Muslim is the, Jude, is the religion. And some were taught until the age of three that Christianity is the religion. If you will take this baby, put it in different countries, you will have a different stories. You know, we are buying stories, we are buying fairy tales, no matter what the fairy tale is. But at the end, we are human beings. And the basic thing are what's important. So we have decided that we can facilitate this process with Aviv. And Naviv is actually a network of centers based on the Israeli technology and the protocol and the treatment that we have established. And we are focusing on the most important thing, brain performance. A light unto the whole world. And that's what we need to do. And it started small. It's not so small anymore. It's growing all the time. And we chose this center in the U.S because we were looking for a place that can be a hub for education. On intention, we haven't started in, in New York or in LA because we needed a place that we could settle down quietly, make sure that everything is perfectly working. And now that I'm here and I see that everything is perfectly working, I grab the green line to establish additional center in the U.S., which is the process that's happening now. And people are coming here from all over the U.S. There are people that come in here from different countries, even though we have corona with all the limitation, which is terrible because we are disconnecting because of this corona instead of connecting. But we're actually doing that. And we're going to have a center in Singapore. We will have a center in different countries. And we are sharing all the data, meaning, Every client that is going in here to the treatment, it's the same advanced MRI technology that we have in Israel. Same machine, same in Dubai. Okay? Same cognitive test, can be different languages. Same cognitive test, same physical performance. All the data is being shared. The conclusion is being shared immediately with all over. More than that, in Israel, it's the hub for the research that is continue. Because, you know, Israel, we are working fast with innovation and research. And we are working an amazing research group that we have. People that are coming from physics, from maths, from biology, from neuroscience, physician, physiotherapist, neuropsychologist, all of us working together. So we are continue to do a lot of research. This is the research hub in Israel. Every time we have something new, and brilliantly implanted it on the center. We, are, we don't have the gap between the research and its application. We have a result, it's a good result, 
the implication can be done immediately. And by that we are bypassing a lot of the bureaucracy that usually happen. You know, we are all human beings, we have ego, okay, which is, which is terrible, okay? If we could only remember that we all start in a certain place and finishing in the same place. If we could remember that, there would be more modesty and less ego in this world. So we could have done a lot of things better. And by doing that, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. It's a huge privilege. Every day that I'm walking in the morning, I'm saying, wow, I'm privileged. I'm here. Wow. Actually, people are walking. Actually, people are getting the treatment here based on our development. That's, that's a huge privilege. That's a huge privilege. Absolutely. The common denominator of what science brings and your medicine brings as a bridge building, really, is incredible. You are an American, Dave. What's your perspective on that? If for the team here in Central Florida, just to have an opportunity to support Dr. Afradi um, in building this bridge, we have learned so much from our Israeli partners. We've We've learned a lot from our Dubai partners. And every time that we have another client walk through those doors, to have a chance for them to walk out a better person, a better future, a future of independence and control, um, I'm grateful. And as Shai said multiple times, it's a privilege to be here serving on this team and, and changing the way that healthcare is delivered in this country. Dave, I can't tell you how impressed I am with all of this. This is really an amazing surprise to me personally as well. And before we conclude, I'd like to ask you, Shai, if I may call you by your first name, to just give us a final thought on how you see the, the near future. I will tell you of how I see the near future. I will tell you on Monday what happened today until our interview. It started with an NFL player well known over here, that had multiple concussion along his life. And when he came over here, he, he, he couldn't connect with his children, his wife, his people. He was sitting at home for 10 years. And I was sitting with him, with him today, he had finished the program. And he's amazing. Now, he's communicating his life back. And his demonstration for me was, you know what happened to me over here when I need to describe the program? It's just like I was 10 years with my eyes closed, and now, whoops, it's open. And I'm looking at his brain, see the new neurons in his brain, the new blood vessels. And it's amazing, and he's gotten his life back, and he's fully functioning, active, working, generating, amazing thing. And then I met another guy that suffer from Lyme disease. In Israel, we don't have Lyme disease, but here, unfortunately, you have plenty. And she was non-functioning from physical perspective and cognitive perspective for the last five years. And she saw me walking around, and she was running after me, calling me, shy, shy, shy. I said, look around, I said, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for the technology you have developed in Israel. I have regained my life back. I can hold my kids, I can play with them, I can go back to work. None of this would happen unless what you are doing in Israel. And I'm gaining my life back. And then I had the third meeting. <laughs> Two people here from the villages suffer from cognitive decline, the age-related cognitive decline. Not dementia. Remind me what your name was? Reading a book. You need to go a page backward anytime. Watching a series of moving in the, in the TV show. They need to recall what was the last session they saw two, two days ago. I was sitting with them, looking at the brain. Again, new ones regenerated, blood vessels regenerated. And they are saying, thank you very much. Now we are reading a books, a lot of books. We started to study that and that, and we are taking this course and that course. 
they will not have dementia. Their biology of the brain was gaining back in time. So if I'm taking only, th these are several meetings I have today before we are discussing. So we need to scale it up. And the future that I see is a future that we are approaching the brain and regeneration of a brain tissue in a different way. I was taught in medical school that neurons cannot, cannot be regenerated. Surprise, surprise. And we are going to face a future that we don't take for granted anymore. Dementia. We don't take for granted anymore the age-related functional decline. We can reverse it. And even though people are claiming today that this is part of nature, a lot of things in the past were part of nature. The number one killer for young female is childbirth. If something will happen today, there will be a whole investigation about it. The number one killer in young babies was dehydration, diarrhea. If something like that will happen today, there will be a whole investigation. And the way I see it, in the near future, if somebody will have dementia, if somebody will have Alzheimer, there will be a whole investigation about it. How did it happen? And this is the future that we need to approach. We should not take for granted anymore the so-called age-related and functional decline that culminate in Alzheimer of dementia. We should not take for granted anymore that if you are playing football and got different concussion in your brain, that you are messed up for the rest of your life. And we should not take for granted that if unfortunately you will be hit by a bug over here that is wandering in the US that causes Lyme disease, you are also debilitated for the rest of your life. We can regenerate brain tissue. We can do that. First by observing it. It's highly sophisticated technology. You still don't have it all over in the US, but you have it here at the first sight. We can generate neurons. We can generate blood vessels in the brain. We can gain the functionality. Again, it's still not over the US, but it's already here in the US as the first hub that can do that. And we can reevaluate and monitor many stuff. Still, it's not available on the US, but it's available here. This is the turning point. And soon we will have additional affiliated center in our location. And this is such a terribly important concern for millions of people. And the message of hope uh, that you have researched and made into an absolute reality is incredible and phenomenal. I have to shake your hand and thank you so much for being with us here today. And you, of course. Thank you.